be the outreach pastor here at Connect Fellowship Church. I'm also the weekend team connector. So if you weren't able to hear that Pastor Brian and Pastor Dawn are on a sabbatical this month, I'm here to tell you it is an honor for us to be able to celebrate this time for them to come and just worship the Lord, get renewed, get refreshed. They pour into us night and day. God gave them a vision a few years back. And within that vision, Connect Fellowship was birthed. So it is an honor for them to be able to take this time and to rest. And so I feel very humbled that they have asked me as your outreach pastor to just come and share what God has laid on my heart. So before we go any further, I just want to just give this service to the Lord. I want to say thank you for online campus. We love you. We enjoy connecting with you. Thank you. Thank you. I find it a pleasure each and every Sunday to see you guys, to see your smiling faces, to see you throughout the week. So let's just go to the Lord. God, I just ask you to just bless this day, bless the words, and send them forth, Father God to each person. May they be changed as they leave this day, leave this service, Father God. I ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So I don't know how many of you were at the outreach this past Saturday, but I'm going to tell you it was awesome. I see a lot of you all were out there. But I'm going to tell you what, we partnered with Feeding the Gulf Coast, and we had over, mm, right at about 14,000 pounds of food that we gave out. Yes. We had over 40 volunteers there. We had volunteers from other churches. We had volunteers from other states to come in. And it took a team to do that. So we had about 430 cars that came through. That, that was, you know, when we quit counting, and we, and we had people to come in after that. But out of those 430 cars, about 40% of those people had brought a neighbor who came with them. So we gave them a box for their family and for their neighbor. So we averaged that up to be out of 40%, about 600 families. Most families, would you agree, would have about three people in their family. Maybe the mother and father, maybe the mother and two kids, maybe the the father and two kids. Sometimes it's more than that. A lot of times you find families with four and more. Well, if you add that up, that's about 1,800 mouths that were fed. Praise God. Man, I tell you what. If you came, if you pulled up, you saw a parking lot full of full of a parking lot team. Man, they were getting that traffic in and out. They were, I mean, I could not have done it. I I, I just couldn't have. When I see traffic like that, it was like, I mean, it I'm telling you, they had three rows of traffic. They had them lined up right here. Another row was coming in. They'd pull out. I don't know how many cars we fit in this parking lot, but it was amazing on the parking team. When you came through the line, you didn't even have to get out of the car. You just pulled up. There was a welcome tent there. They were so excited that you came. They had those boxes. They were putting them in the cars. We had some book bags with school supplies in them. They were giving out school supplies left and right. They were amazing. We had a refreshment team because, trust me, these people needed something to drink. <laughs> Production, oh, my gosh. There were, there were 10 pallets in the back, you guys. And within those 10 pallets, we had busy bees, busy servants, people who were, you know, coming through the line with bags and they were, I mean, boxes, and they were filling those boxes up. It was amazing. The food, the, the canned goods, the salads. It was all God. I mean, it was amazing. 
we had cheerleaders out there, and they weren't in the cheerleaders, you know, outfits. I call them cheerleaders because they were the ones, as you were leaving, as the cars were leaving, they were so excited to let you know we appreciated them. And the fact that we were holding up signs saying, have a great day. We got so much feedback from that outreach. We had another pastor to reach out to us. And he told me, he said, you know, I had no idea the dynamics that went into what you guys were doing. One of our church members came in. They had a busy day. It was, um, they only had a few minutes. They, they weren't able to serve. They came in and they stood on the on the ramp right outside, and they said, you know what? This blesses my heart. Blesses my heart. It was a beautiful day. But I'm going to tell you what. There's something that stands for team, and that's together, everyone achieves more. Everyone. So this could not have been pulled off as successful without you guys volunteering and jumping in there to see your excitement was amazing. But I have to give this one you credit. He came to me before we ever got the outreach going, and he said, Pastor Donna, he said, is there anything that I can help you with to get this event off the ground to help you be successful, not me be successful, but the event to be successful. So we got to talking about it, and we got to, you know, tossing around ideas. He said, how about I fill the backpack full of school supplies? I said, you know what? That's awesome. Great idea. You guys, he put a team together, and before you know it, we had adults coming in. They were uh, making salads. They were making brownies. They were making uh, spaghetti, had drinks going for them. And to see them, I mean, a whole team of youth and stuff. Thank you, Pastor Taylor. He has these youth throughout the summer on interns teaching them about leadership and life skills and about Christ. They go home to their parents, and, and their parents are pouring into their life. You may know this guy. He plays the drums. Him and um, uh, Trey swap back and forth, but it's King. Awesome, awesome, awesome young kid. Thank you guys for those who were um, not able to come and who were praying to make this event successful because I'm going to tell you what, it was a beautiful day. The, the temperature was great, the weather was perfect, the sun was bright, it was shining, but it was a beautiful day. So thank you if you weren't able to make it, but you were praying. We appreciate it. We felt your prayers. Those of you who donated school supplies, we appreciate it. Those of you who uh, donate to Kingdom Builders, we appreciate it, but because... Because of you, we can pull these events off. So it touches not only each person serving, but it goes out to the community and blesses others. Outreach is an opportunity for us all to join together and open our hearts up to people. It's an opportunity to meet people exactly where they are. I created some outreach bags for you guys because you know what I don't want you to be hearers of the word only God wants you to be doers of the word also so in the outreach bag we've uh, put together some toothpaste some toothbrush some deodorant some socks some rain ponchos food I'm going to ask each one of you to grab a bag on your way out but as you grab that bag keep it in your car because I don't know about you, when I pull up to an intersection or something and there's someone standing there, I'm digging for a dollar, some change, and I don't have any. So go ahead, put $5 in that Ziploc bag, put it in there, so, and keep it in your car. So next time you pull up to an intersection, guess what? 
you personally are going to bless someone. So be sure to pick up that bag on the way out. Outreach is about loving and serving others. And I want to share with you how I came to connect. See, I too was at an outreach. When I had this lady to come up to me and invite me to church, Pastor Dawn, she said, come to connect. We're, we're, we're a new church. We're new in the area. We would love to have you. Ironic thing about it, it was an out, it was a city's outreach. It was a city fair, but they were there giving away school supplies. And so as we were donating towards school supplies, it was the very city fair that we were supposed to do in August that got postponed to beating the Gulf Coast this past Saturday. So I came here because of an outreach. And now I stand here humbled to be your outreach pastor. The very core of outreach is to love all and serve all. And that is in our core value, to love all, to serve all. I want to show you a video real quick, if you guys could turn the video on. Why does this um, food drive mean so much to you? Well, I saw when y'all had the first one and I wasn't able to make it because of my husband having uh, two strokes and I can't leave him alone. And Miss Donna was nice enough to bring a box to my home, which meant a whole lot. And I was going through so much and still am that being able to have somebody that cares enough to reach out to the community, not even knowing who I am, and offering help is just a godsend. Being the hands and feet of Christ and spreading the love to all people in our surrounding area and in our community is the very core. It is the mission statement of outreach. It's the living organism of God. We want people to love so radical that it makes them ask why. Some of you may know me, some of you may not, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself real quick. I don't usually meet a stranger. <laughs> you probably know that already, <laughs> but I love people from all walks of life. I do. I find people interesting, and believe me, I've met some interesting people. <laughs> but I love to see God's creative work. He created us all different and unique. As we move into this month's series, Home and Garden, I wanted to share with you the heartbeat of your home and garden. I want to share with you a time where I, I met an interesting person. The first time I met this person, I had pulled up to McDonald's. And when I pulled up to McDonald's, I'm looking because it's through the drive through right there. The door is right here to go in and out. And the playground is over here. And there's a gentleman sitting on the sidewalk right there. I walk on him. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, oh. Why am I just looking at this guy? I was mesmerized. His shirt was all baggy on him. It was dirty. It had stains on it. His pants were a little big. Holes in them. His shoes 
were all tattered. His hair looked like mine sometimes. It was scraggly. And so his shoulders weren't there. He sat there on the cover. So I said, okay, God, I don't know what you got in mind because when God shows you someone, you're either going to pray with them or you're going to talk with them. That's, that's just how it is. So I got out of my car, and I walked up. And as I passed him, I said, hey, how are you doing? He looked up at me. He said, fine. And he looked back down. Walked in McDonald's, and I said, oh, no, you don't. I need two Happy Meals and two Cokes. So I walked back outside, and I sat down by this man. And he looked over at me. I said, here's your Happy Meal, and here's your Coke. He said, why? Why not? I didn't know what God was up to. So sure enough, we laughed and, and, and you know, um, just talked and everything. Well, I invited him to my home. He shared with me his story. And it's something I'll never forget. He told me, he said, you know, he said, I was driving home one afternoon. He said, I got to an intersection, and there was a lot of commotion going on on the other side of the intersection. But my house was over there on the other side, so, you know, I, I, I was thinking, my neighbors, I was thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, what's going on? So as he goes through the intersection, he realizes it's his wife car. As he looks closer, his wife is laying out from the car off to the side. He said he pulled his car over as fast as he could. His heartbeat was shaking. His legs were all nervous. He ran up to her, and it was too late. She had already taken her last At that point, he sobbed, he cried, and he looked over there at the paramedic, and he saw his daughter. She was elementary age. He ran over to her. He picked her up as best he could, raised up. Paramedics were all around. And she took her last breath in his arms. He said at that point, he was clocked out. He couldn't handle life. He couldn't handle people. He didn't want to be around people. He didn't want to explain how he felt. So he took a job driving an 18-wheeler that was packing meat. If you know anything about 18-wheelers, and I know back then the meat used to hang from the top, and if the truck went this way, the meat went that way. If the truck went back, the meat went back. If the truck went this way, that way, it swung from the top. He said he was going down a mountain, and his brakes went out. He had two choices to make. He could run over the little man in the car in front of him, or he could swerve around to the oncoming traffic and hit a bus head on full of school kids. He chose to run over the little man in front of him. He said at that point, he was done. He was done. You guys, I didn't know what to say to him. I couldn't console him. I couldn't give him a happy meal and a Coke with a smile. The only thing I could do was to pray for him. And pray with him. So I did. See, there's a lot of hurting people in this world. A lot of people have been hurt. See, you guys, I didn't open up my house to him. I opened up my home to him. Let's see what God says about a home in Ephesians 3.17. 
Christ says, Christ will make a home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. So the first essential thing that you need in your home is Christ. When when Christ resides in your heart, it's the very dwelling place of God. And where you go, he goes. There's no place like home. It's not a building made of bricks and beans. It's the very dwelling place of God. Christ will make his home in your heart. In the Old Testament, you hear God specifically lined out a tabernacle on the intricate details of what it was to look like. It was the very dwelling place that they could go to worship God. So Christ will make his home in your heart. What else does God say about a home? 1 John 4, 15. All who confess that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who love live God. And God lives in them. And as we live in God, Our love grows perfect. The second essential thing we need is love. 1 John 4.19, we love because he first loved us. But let's look and see, what is love? What is love? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, says love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous, boastful, or proud, or rude. It does not command its own way. It's not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices wherever the truth wins. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. You have to love. You have to love. Let's see what else God says that we need. Look at John, I mean Luke 8, 16. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or hides it under the bed. A lamp is placed on a stand where the light can be seen all who enter the house, by all who enter the house. You see, you need a lamp. I love that song that some of you probably can remember in vacation Bible school or as you were growing up. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel tree? No. No. John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will walk in, uh, will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. If you have the light, you're not going to walk in darkness. If you've ever been into a dark, dark room, when the light comes on, the darkness leaves. There is no amount of darkness that will overpower the light. You don't know it's dark until you turn on the light. And then the darkness has to flee. I love that song that was sang this morning. Jesus, Jesus, 
you made the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silenced it. Jesus, Jesus, your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. You have to have a lamp. Let's see what else we need in our house or in a home. Matthew 3, 11, the second part, the end part of that is he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You see, if you've ever been camping and, you, and you're hanging out at the campsite and the fire is roaring and blazing, you can be mesmerized by it. But that fire is strong. It's strength. It's full of energy. God led the Israelites by night by a pillar of fire. Do you have a holy fire in you? You know, I love that song that says, he'll light a fire deep down in your soul that you can't contain. You'll want more of him. Do you have a holy fire? Do you need your fire ignited? Let's see what else we need in our home. The fourth essential thing we need in our home is food. Jesus said, well, John said in 648, and Jesus said this, yes, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. As the Israelites were wandering around, God told them that he was giving them manna from heaven. Take some for yourself, but then take it home and share. So as we reflect back on what's in a home, the heart is the very dwelling place of God. The light is his presence. Fire, holy strength and power. Bread, Christ himself. Maybe you need to invite God into your heart, into your home. Has your light gone out? Maybe you have a 40-watt bulb, and it needs to be a 100-watt bulb. Are you following him in the midst of the darkness? Do you have that holy spirit? Fire that you just can't contain and you want more? Are you hungry? Church, do you have a spiritual hunger for God? Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, above all else, Guard your heart because everything you do flows out of it, flows from it. Everything that you do flows from your heart. Heart is where the home is. Home is where the heart is. Some ask Jesus what the most important commandment was. And he said, Love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. And the second thing was to love your neighbor as yourself. We can look around in this world today. We see riots, riotings, and, and shootings. 
We see murders. We see opinionated people. We see division. We see world pandemic going on right now. Hurricanes. Sexual trafficking. Suicides. What battle are you fighting? How are you fighting that battle? Praise to garden. We sang it. You guys worship to it. You turn mourning into dancing. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. Are you allowing yourself to fight your battle? Are you in the Lord's army? I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. There's nothing better than being in the presence of the Lord. His name is I am. He didn't say his name was I was or I will be. He said I am. That is a present God is in your present moment. God is here right now. The gentleman I was telling you about, he felt like everyone else had left him. And then he left everyone else. But Christ said, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's look back at Ephesians 3, 17 through 18. We're going to add 18 to it. See the, uh, the verse below it. It says, Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. God loves you so much. Do you trust him? I'm going to share with you another story and I'll wrap it up. But Saturday, we were at the outreach. And I'm busy running and doing and this Young lady comes up to me. She's about 12 or 13. She's in uprising. I mean, she's in um, the, the uh, children's department back there with Crystal, Pastor Crystal. And Pastor Crystal is pouring her heart out to the kids, your kids. As you're in here worshiping and hearing from God, she's in there pouring into their lives. But the, the young lady, Sam, came to me, and she said, Pastor Donna, I don't know what we're doing, and I don't know where we're going, but I'm following you. And I thought, you know, what an awesome picture for children in Christ. Isn't that what God wants from us? God, I don't know where we're going, but I'm following you. I'm following you. Mark 4, 26 says, The kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed in the soil. Church, miracles happen when we plant in love. Love all. Serve all. It's one of our core values. So if everyone will bow their head. God, you say knock and seek and we will find you.
But God, as you call our name, I ask it. Will you open the door to your heart? Would you allow the light to turn on? Would you allow God to set your soul on fire with a burning desire for him? Would you feed off the spiritual food that is that manna from heaven? He said, you'll never hunger, you'll never thirst. God, you created an eternal home for us, and we want to say thank you, but today, You want us to open up and allow you to live in our home here on earth. That's your heart. That's your heart. God, I thank you for building us all together as one to just go share the gospel, the good news that you love us so much. That you gave your son to die on the cross for our sins. So I say, church, today, God is with you. Right now, in this present moment. If you need to ask God into your heart, now is the time. Yesterday's gone. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. Today is the day. So, God, as we give you this day, I ask that you call our name, draw us in closer to you, and set our hearts on fire for the presence of you. Amen. Amen, amen. Hey, guys, what a great message. Thank you, Pastor Donna. That was incredibly inspiring, full of love. Guys, listen, if you have decided today that you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart, to dwell in your heart, or if you need to reignite that flame, that passion that that God has put in you, God, we'd love to help you through that. We'd love to work with you. If you would, there's a card in the seat back in front of you, or if you're online, you can do this on our app or at connectfellowship.church. This is your next move. Fill that card out. Take it to the red wall in the back. See those guys back there. They would love to talk with you and help work you through your journey to reignite that flame. Guys, if this is your first time with us, we are so glad that you're here with us today. Guys, if this is your first time, we want to welcome you. Can, connect, can we put our hands together for our first time attenders? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We love you guys. We're so excited that you're here with us. If this is your first time, though, or if you've never done it, there's another card in the seat back in front of you or behind you, whichever's closer. Fill that card out that says, new here. Drop that into one of the boxes in the back of the auditorium, or you can also take that to the red wall where it says your next move. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love for you to go ahead and download our app. You can download another app called Right Now Media. We have that as a free gift to you. Download Right Now Media. It's got tons of tons of uh, media, videos, tons of things on there that we'd love for you to check out. Also, it's time to do tithes and offerings. We believe in giving. Giving is, in our opinion, worship to God. We do that freely, and we believe that is between you and God. There are plenty of ways that you can do that here. You can go online, connectfellowship.church, click on Give. You can download our app. There's a giving envelope in the seat back in front of you. You can put cash or check in there. Drop that off in one of the boxes in the back or in the lobby. Plenty of ways that you can do that. Guys, also, while you're preparing your tithes and offerings, I'd like to go over just a couple things with you. Um, First, I'm going to cover this month, October, is Pastor Appreciation Month. We have a ton of pastors here that love that love you, pour out their heart to you. They do everything behind the scenes. They're praying for you daily, day and night. Um, but we, we, wanna, we would like to take just some time to honor our lead pastors who are, who I, I don't even know how to put it into words. I, I'm drawing a blank. These guys pour their heart and soul into 
this family and this community day and night and have for many years. They are on a sabbatical right now, taking some time off to renew their relationship, their family, their relationship with God. We love those guys. If you would like to, we will take a, a special, we'll call it a special offering, a love offering for Pastor Appreciation Month. If you'd like to, to bless the Roussels financially through Pastor Appreciation Month, you can do that online, giving envelope, through the app. Just, just mark on there, Pastor Appreciation. We love those guys. Also, if, if you're unable to give financially, we understand, and that's great. Those guys also need a word of encouragement every once in a while also. If they have at some point touched your lives, if you have a testimony that involves the Roussels, Pastor Brian, Pastor Dawn, we'd love to hear it. We'd love to share it with them. You can write it on one of the cards in the seat backs in front of you. You can go online to connectfellowship.church. You can email us at connectfellowship. Oh, it's info at connectfellowship.church. You can do that. Send us those stories. We, th I'm telling you, that will bless their hearts to no end. We've also got uh, Empowerment Track that starts today, tonight, 6 o'clock on Zoom. If you need the info, you can get that from the Red Wall. Your next move, Pastor Julian, Pastor Audrey, we'll give you that information. Um, we're also small groups. We've got small groups going on. Uh, ladies tonight, men tomorrow night. If you need information about that, again, you can message us on Facebook. You can in, uh, email us, info at connectfellowship.church. Small groups are a great way to get involved, get plugged in, and just, just, just connect with like-minded people of God. We love you. We love our community. God is love. If you would stand with me, we'll pray and head out. Father God, we just, we just thank you for another opportunity to come here and hear an amazing word today. Father God, we thank you for love. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the love that you've shown us by sending your son, your one and only son, to die for us on the cross. Father God, we just, I, I pray that everyone here today has just had an opportunity to open their heart and allow you in. Father God, that, that you that you will put a, a knowing on them that, that you are with them every single day. You are with us, the great I am, right now. That you dwell in us. Father God, and we will carry you and you will carry us wherever we go. In the darkness, you are a light. Father God, we, we give you praise for that. We thank you. We thank you for cheerful givers, faithful givers, who continue to, to work through kingdom builders so that we can we can go out and reach our community and our family here at Connect. Father God, we thank you for all these things. In your son Jesus we pray. Amen.